Welcome to another video in this series where we're going to hook up our Laravel backend with Angular 2 or Vue.js as the frontend. Now, in the last video of the series, we finished hooking up our Angular 2 frontend. So we were able to basically create a new quote, submit that, and that would then be saved on the server on the Laravel backend. So if we reload here, or we don't even need to reload if we click get quotes, I should say, we can now load this quote and we can also edit it and save those changes to the server. As you can see, if I reload and get the quotes again, that persists. So this is working with the Angular 2 frontend. Now we finished building this. The goal in this video and the next video is to build the same with the Vue.js framework serving our frontend here or creating our frontend here. So let's dive into this. Now, in order to create this Vue.js application, which I'm then going to connect to this Laravel API, and as a side note, I will later in the series also cover how you can embed Vue.js on Laravel views using the plate templating engine, but not here. So in order to create this project, I'll use the Vue CLI, and you can find a video where I explain how that works on this channel. So with the CLI installed, you can run view in it, then the template you want to use, I'll use the Webpack simple template, and then the project name, I'm going to name this view Laravel. Now I'll hit enter and yes, there is a new version available, but that still works. And then I will basically confirm all those defaults here. And with that all set up, I can now CD into this newly created project run npm install as I'm guided here. And thereafter we can run npm run dev to see our Vue.js project running in the browser. So I'll skip forward to this step. So all the dependencies were successfully installed. I can now run npm run dev to start the build process and this little development server, which automatically spins up this new tab. This is now the startup project or the startup page, which was created. And I'll now open it in my editor, WebStorm. Here it is. And of course you can use any other editor. You can use Sublime, Adam, Visual Studio Code, whatever you like. So I opened it here in WebStorm and now we can start editing this application to, well, give it the same functionality we implemented in Angular 2 in the last lectures. So where should we start? Well, I'd say let's start with adding the feature of being able to add quotes to this app. That would be amazing because that would be the first step. Fetching them is not the best first step because what would we fetch? So in order to add this, we of course need some components in this application, some additional pages. And I also want to use routing to go to this new quotes page and then the quotes page, which will list all the quotes. So let's start by creating those components. Now here I will create a components directory in my view project and in the components directory, I will create two new components for now. That is the quotes.view file, which will hold, well, all my quotes and then the new quote.view file. And I will later also add another file, but I'll come back to this. So with that, I also want to have some styling and I will simply download Bootstrap to get some nice styling. So on getbootstrap.com under download bootstrap, I will quickly all, uh, only grab this link here, the CSS code. Simply grab this and go back to the project to, well, just dump it into my index.html file. And whilst I'm there, I can also change the title to let's say view plus Laravel. Of course, that's purely optional. And I also want to clean up this app.view file here. I will already get rid of all the stuff in this template here. This under the list, all this starter stuff. We'll get rid of the content in the object I return in the data method here. We'll get rid of the name here, I don't need that. And of all the styles set up here, they aren't needed too. So with that, I cleaned up this file. We can now start working on the new quote.view file. In this view file, I of course need a template section where I wanna set up, well, the template for this component. And here I will simply add a form without an action though, because we're going to handle this through Vue.js and will not let it uh, submit a new request or send a new request to the server. Instead, we wanna do this behind the scenes through Vue.js. Here I will then add a couple of things or well, one thing I guess a new div with a class of form group. That's a CSS class implemented by Bootstrap or made available by Bootstrap, which will simply give this some nice styling. And in there, I wanna have a label for the content of the quote. And this will also receive, 
or will receive this text of content in between. And thereafter, I of course need an input which allows me to enter the actual quote. So here we will have type text. Then this will be the ID content because this is what this label is referring to. And then I will add a class of form control. And now this is important, V model. This V model directive, which will set up two way binding in Vue.js and which will allow me to get the input the user enters here. So I'll quickly distribute this over multiple lines so that it's easier to read. And now the model has to be bound to some data property defined in the view instance responsible for this template. So before filling this with some life, let's add this instance in the script section here, of course. And in this script section here, I simply want to export a def default JavaScript object. This will be the view instance responsible for this template. And in there I'll have the data method, which of course needs to return an object, as we always have to do this in components, in the view instance behind a component. And this data object here, this object that returned the data method, I should say, can now hold all the properties I can access in my template. So here I will simply set up the quote content property. This name is of course totally up to you. And I'll set it to an empty string by default. I can now bind this to quote content here, this V model, so that I have this connection between the data in my view instance and the data in the template or the data the user will enter into this input. So with this, the form is almost finished. I will now add a button with a class of button and then button primary, some bootstrap classes to give it a nicer look and then add the type submit to make this button actually submit the form. And of course I should give it a label of submit. So with this, the form can be submitted. I of course also need to catch that submit event. So on the form element here, I'll add add submit and add prevent so that it doesn't send a request, it doesn't do its default stuff. Instead here, I want to simply execute the on submitted method. You can of course choose any method name you want here. And I will add this here in my view instance under methods which is a JavaScript object, of course. And here I will set up the on submitted method like this. So this will get executed whenever this submit button here is pressed. So whenever this form is submitted, this is therefore the part where I want to reach out to, well, my backend to Laravel and send that quote content we have here. Now we could also add some validation here. I'm not going to do it here. I didn't do it on the Angular 2 example too. You can of course try to add some validation for Vue.js as a side note. Validation is not baked into the framework, but there are great third party packages available like vValidate, which you might have a look at if you need for validation. I actually might create a video about this too now that I think about it. Anyways, so now we can submit it. The next part is to be able to send an HTTP request with our quote data to our Laravel backend so that we can actually store the data in the database there. So let's work on this next. Now submitting HTTP requests in a Vue.js instance is actually not baked into Vue.js. There is no HTTP service as it is the case for Angular 2. Therefore, we can add any HTTP service, any HTTP or Ajax third party package we want. Now choices would be a view resource, which used to be an officially supported package, but isn't anymore, but it's still a great package to add or very popular to Axios, which is not related to Vue.js in any way, but again, you can drop in any, well, Ajax package you want to use. So I'll use X Axios here. I hope I did pronounce this correctly, Axios, whatever. And we find the instruction on how to add it on the official GitHub page, which you can simply find by Googling for Axios. So here, npm install Axios is the first step. So let's quickly do this. I'll open up the terminal and run npm install Axios with the save flag to also create an entry in the package.json file. And now that it was installed here on my, um, well, on my project, I can start using it. And on this GitHub page, we can also find the code we need to run Axios post. Now, of course we need to get Axios. So I need to add an import here in the new quote um, component, simply name it Axios from Axios from this package. This name here is totally up to you. It will simply import all the content from this package. And then on submitted, I can therefore then run Axios post. And here we need to insert the URL. And that URL is the same URL as in the 
Angular 2 section or in the Angular 2 lecture, it's HTTP and then the, well, or generally the path to your Laravel backend, wherever this runs on your local machine, might be localhost, whatever address, something like this. I assigned an alias, so therefore for me it's Laravel ng 2 viewdev and then slash IPA slash quote is the path we set up on our backend where we should send the quotes to. The second argument for the post method then is the actual data we want to send. So the post here. So this should actually be a JavaScript object where we have a content property, which is our quote content here. And I'll simply wrap this into a new line so that it is easier to read or to see. So that's the second argument to the post method. Again, this follows the same structure we used in the Angular 2 lectures or uh, videos in this series. And this of course follows the structure we impose from our backend or by our backend, where we expect data to arrive in this format to have a content property which then holds the actual content. And if you're not sure about this, definitely go back at the videos in this series where we set up the backend where this is shown. So with this, we're sending the data, we're sending this post request. Now we can also chain a then method because Axios will actually give us back a promise to listen to any response we might get. And let's simply log that response to the console. I'll also react to any error we might get. So I'll add a catch method where I could receive an error, which I will then also log to the console just to be able to debug this. So with all this out of the way, I should restart or rerun my process here, npm run dev. And we won't see anything to be honest because, well, I cleared my app.view file. I added my new component, but we're not using this component. So let's use it. For this, I will go to my app.view file and I will add it as a local component. You could of course also set it up globally in your project. Here again, I'll use a local one. So I'll import this component. I'll name it new quote from dot slash components, new quote dot view file at this import. And then in my view instance here, I'll add the components property, which allows me to register local components. And here you set up any selector you want to use like app new quote, for example and then assign new quote as a value to the selector. And this now allows us to use this app new quote selector in our application. So if we now save this and we have a look at this application, this now looks better. We do have this new quote input. It does look a bit ugly though. This of course is because well, we have nothing else but this element here, right? So let's use a little bit of bootstrap styling. Let's actually add a container here Let's then add a row class, a div with a class row, and then the call xs12 column here to place our quote, our quote component, new quote component inside of that. Now, this should look much nicer. We're also going to add routing, no worries. We're going to add this in the next video in the series. For now, I wanna see that this works. So now if I reload this, this looks better. We now have it a little bit more centered and not spanning the full width here. So I'll now open up the console to see any potential errors and then I'll send a new quote. I'll, I'll try to send it at least. Let's see if it works. This looks pretty good. We get back an object where we have status text created. Status 201 looks promising. Now let's also have a look at our database, our backend database on our, well, backend server, if this was indeed stored in the database. I did load my database here with SQL Pro, a nice tool to look into a MySQL database. And there in the quotes table, we see a new quote. The first quote here is the one created through Angular 2, but this is the quote created through Vue.js. So now we have both clients being able to work with that. And actually, let me start the Angular 2 project we created. I'm doing this on another screen so that I'm able to have a look at my running Angular 2 app here at localhost 4200, once this uh, stops or finishes building the project. Now, if we click get quotes, we should also get the quote we created in our view app. And we do here, the second quote. So this is working great. We are able to create quotes in our Vue.js client 
It was super simple to set up since we did most of the heavy lifting in the previous videos, enabled cores and so on. So this was really easy to do. The next step in the next video is to add routing, to also have a page with all quotes and to enable ourselves to well fetch quotes in the view app too, so that we don't constantly have to do this in the Angular 2 application. We'll work on this in the next video in this series. See you there. Bye.